Hi everyone! How are you? Kumusta? <laughs> uh, my name is Miguel and I work as the Monitoring and Evaluation Manager at the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts here in London. And my dear friends from the Girl Scouts of the Philippines, Angelica and Marie, asked me to create a video for you, future advocacy champions, on how to run a focus group discussion or FGD. So, for today's video, I'm gonna tell you some of the tips on how to conduct FGD and hopefully you'll find it useful and you'll be able to apply it once you do focus group discussion in the future. So, are you all ready to hear the tips? Okay. <laughs> So tip number one, FGD is not an interview, okay? As the name implies, focus group discussion. The whole objective of FGD is for the group or the participants to discuss amongst themselves. And this is your main role as a facilitator. You have to make sure that the participants in your group interact with one another and by interaction like debating or arguing or of course it's a friendly conversation about the topic or questions that you are trying to explore so you have to make sure that that's the dynamic that you create in your focus group discussion so yeah that's tip number one simply fgd is not a one-to-one -one interview but it's more the group discussion that you want to get or achieve yeah okay Tip number two, know your questionnaire by heart. Yes, you should know all your questions and the different answers that you want to get from your questions by heart. Why is this important? It's because whenever the participants start discussing about things about the topics, sometimes they're already discussing some of the questions that you have in your questionnaire that will come along later. So it's really important that you are mindful of that so you won't repeat the same questions later on. Because if that happens, some of the participants will feel annoyed because it feels like you're not listening to their discussion at all because you keep repeating the same questions. So yeah, it's really, really important that you know your questions by heart. And as I've said earlier, not just the questions, but also the expected answers from your questions. And why is this important? Because sometimes uh, when people are you know, very passionate about the discussion, sometimes they go already in a different direction that is totally far from what you want to, to get or obtain from your data collection. So you have to make sure that you know what you want to get. So anytime the group goes to a different direction, you can always redirect them to the proper direction. Yes, and that's your role as facilitator. So again, tip number two, know your questions and expected answers by heart. Okay, tip number three, rapport or building relationship with your participants is really, really, really crucial in a focus group discussion. And therefore, introduction is very important. You should make sure that you allot a significant amount of time with your introduction. Um, and what is usually covered introduction, very basic, number one, the objectives of your focus group discussion. You have to clearly explain to your participants like why are you doing this kind of data collection. And this is also your opportunity, which is the second thing, to explain some of the concepts that you will try to later explore on that you think is really abstract or not known by everyone. So it's really important to explain it at the start so that when you start the discussion, there's no confusion about um, the topics that you're um, trying to explore, as I've said. So a very um, basic example is like when you talk about young people, what age is young people? It varies per country, it varies for every context. So at the start, at the introduction, it's really important that you said that, okay, when I say, when we talk about young people, this is 30 years and below. 
So things like that. And number three, really, really important, is for you to ask and remember their names. Yes, it really helps a lot in building that rapport and in facilitation if you know and remember the names of the participants. So how can you build rapport to your participants? Well, I can give you two practical tips. Okay, practical tip number one is always start your FGD with an icebreaker or any energizers or games, any fun activity. Yes, and I am assuming that you're really, really good at this because you're a Girl Scout and you know so many fun activities. So always try to do that to make sure that your participants feel comfortable. And you can also add twists to the usual introduction. So what I usually do, like instead of asking like usually uh, what's their name, I usually add the twist. Like for example, once you introduce your name, also tell us one adjective that starts with the first letter of your name. So for example, I am Miguel, and since my first letter is M, I'm thinking of marvelous. So I'm Miguel the marvelous. So something like that. And usually that's kind of fun and it allows the participants to think of themselves and introduce themselves as well a little bit deeper to other participants not just with their names okay um second practical tip is you can make name tags for your participants so once they start the round of introduction maybe in a post-it note so you can just write their names and put it in their chest um, so that when you start the discussion you can call them by their names and again, you can add twist into this. So what I usually do, instead of writing the names, I write the adjective that they just described. So related to the first example that I gave. So instead of Miguel, I write marvelous. So when I start the discussion, I will call them as Mr. or Miss Marvelous. <laughs> What's your answer to this one? And usually that also adds a uh, laugh to the group. So yeah, tip number three, rapport and building relationship is really crucial for me. Okay, so the next tip is quite related to what I said previously and that is safe space, okay? In order for your FGD to be very successful, you have to ensure that your participants feel comfortable, that they feel safe in expressing their opinions. So there are two components into this. The first one is the physical comfort. So you have to make sure that the venue that you're conducting your focus group discussion is safe, is physically safe, that it's comfortable to the participants, that um, they're not being distracted, that it's private, um, yes, and you're not being disturbed by um, any other external um, factors. And the second component is mentally, okay? So they should be mentally comfortable. And that's why building rapport, as in my previous tip, is really important because they have to make sure that they feel safe when they express their answers and opinions um, in the discussion. Okay, um, and I can give you another practical tip into this. Um, usually when you conduct focus group discussion, practical tip really helps when you sit in circle because you know circle has no edges and it just is it's a good representation to tell the participants that all people in the circle are equal. And so it doesn't matter, there's no right or wrong answers in whatever question that you're gonna ask. So yeah, so tip number four is make sure about the comfort, physical and mental comfort of your participants. So the fifth tip that I can give you is very straightforward. It's just like setting house rules with your participants. Um, and this is really important to establish at the introduction. Just saying them that this focus group will happen for around 30 minutes to 45 minutes and so we request that everyone in the group will not for example access their phones will not talk to their neighbors or always set the one mic rule wherein when one person is speaking it is expected that other participants will listen and actively listen to what that person is saying Okay, so you can set those house rules, which you know already because you probably run an event or a camp or training in the past that you also apply the same thing. So you can apply those rules as well in the focus group discussion. Tip number six is another crucial thing, or should I say skill, in running a focus group discussion. And that is 
probing. Okay, probing is just like digging deeper with the participants' responses. Because you would observe when you run a focus group discussion, when you ask a question, the participant will just say a one sentence. But obviously, that's not enough. You want to dig deeper to what that person is trying to say, or the other people are also trying to say. So you have to probe, you have to dig deeper to their responses. And again, I can give you some practical tips on how to probe. Usually there are three key questions that you should ask or you could ask. The first one is why, okay? And just basically asking them, why did you say that? Or what is the reason for your response? And usually participants will now try to explain what they meant by their answer. The second key question is what? It's just say like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by what you said and all that stuff? Could you explain it more? Okay, so those are the um, second um, key probing question. And the third key probing question is how, okay? So for example, like when one participant answer response, you can ask the other participants like, how do you feel about what that person said? Or how do you react to what the other person said? And usually that starts a discussion and that allows for the, that digging deeper, as I said, um, will happen. Okay, so probing is important. Probing, probing, probing. <laughs> yes. Okay, tip number seven is usually for those dominant uh, participants. When you conduct your focus group discussion, there will always be one person, at least one person, who always wants to talk. And that's fine, but the purpose of focus group discussion is for you to capture all the opinions and the voice of the people within the group. So you have to make sure that you allow all people in the group to speak up and not just one person. And the practical tip I can give you into this one, what I usually do is I chronologically choose the next person to answer my question. I usually do it either clockwise or counterclockwise. So for example, question number one, I will direct the first question to this person. And then when I start question number two, I will direct it to the person deciding. Question number three to the person deciding. So that will ensure that all participants will be able to answer a question. Now, this technique is really, really effective for those participants who are shy or for those participants who don't initiate the conversation, but will talk when you allow them or when you point them to talk, if you know what I mean. So yeah, so always try to do that to make sure that um, everyone has a chance to speak. Okay, so the next tip or advice is just to make sure that when you run a focus group discussion, it's to make everything flowy and conversational. Um, you really don't want to have a strict, uh, you know, question and answer portion. Um, so you have to like make, again, it's related to making the participants comfortable. Like you're just like making it to appear that you like sharing stories or sharing experiences that you're just like friends, like, yeah, sharing things uh, amongst each other. So it's really important to make sure that, yeah, participants feel that it's just like talking to one another and asking their opinions. And it's not a strict um, environment where they have to answer your question in a rigid manner. Now, tip number nine is all about your FGD team, okay? Whenever you do an FGD, it's ideal that you always have two people who will run the FGD. Okay, so the first person is the facilitator and the second person is the note taker. Okay, this is really, really crucial and important, especially if it's your first time doing an FGD or just few, you have few experiences running an FGD because these are two different skills and it might be difficult for you to multitask if you're just one person. Now, of course, if you're an expert or a pro, <laughs> then you can just run the FGD by yourself. You can facilitate and note take, uh, take notes as well at the same time. But I don't advise this um, regardless if you're an expert or not. It's always important to focus on facilitating and focus on note taking at the same time. Now, of course, if you're a pair, if you're working as a pair, now 
you can always automate the roles at different groups that you want to talk to. So each person has a chance to be a facilitator and each AI and be a note taker as well. In some okay, um, tip number 10 is just a reminder to everyone that in any kind of data collection, such as focus group discussion, you always have to remain neutral at all times. And the most practical way that or tip that I can give you to this is to stick with your questionnaire. Okay? And that's why again it's really important for you to know your questionnaires and question by heart because that will ensure that you keep uh, objective and you don't lose track of your questions. Of course you can always ask follow-up questions, but one thing you should avoid is leading questions. Oh, that's a no-no in any kind of data collection. And what is a leading question? I told you earlier that apart from knowing your questions, you should also know your expected answers. But you have to make a balance that you don't ask a question to your participants that will make them answer your expected answer. I don't know if I'm making sense, but that is a leading question where you ask a question that is 100% sure will force the participant to answer the response that you want to get from them if you know what i mean so never never do that avoid asking leading questions so i can give you an example of a leading question so one of our programs called the cow nutrition one of the key messages is all about the rainbow plates i'm not sure if you heard about rainbow plates but it's all about having a balanced and diverse meal and in, our, in my evaluation, uh, it's really it's important for me to know what did the girls learn from the badge work. And so my question is, what did you learn from Girl Cloud Nutrition? And of course, one of my expected answers that I would expect from the participants to tell me is rainbow plate. But if the participants are not uh, telling about rainbow plate, the example of leading question is for me when I ask for, when I will start asking the participant. So, did you did you learn about rainbow plate in the badge? So that's kind of a leading question um, because it like forces it feeds the participants the type of answer that you want to get from them. So and that puts some bias in terms of your data collection. So. Yeah, so just let them answer freely the question and um, just ask again probing objective questions like is there any other learnings that you learn from your leader for example or if you want to really get that rainbow plate you can say that in this particular stage like green stage what did you learn? What are the key messages that you learned from them? So to just help them remember that, ah, yeah, in green stage, we talk about this, but not give them the actual answer in a question type. And that's an example of a leading question. And the last tip that I want to give to everyone is always, always thank your participants for participating in the focus group discussion. Remember, focus group discussion usually runs for around 30 minutes to one hour to one and a half hours. So these participants gave you one hour of their time. So it's just really appropriate for you to thank them for participating and for all their honest responses from the discussion. And so my practical tip here is after your focus group discussion ends, just don't leave, okay? So try to still engage and talk with the participants and or, you know, you can always do an, uh, a post-FGD activity or fun game or try to have some twists at the end like uh, making doing an activity or game where participants will summarize all the, all the things that you've talked about. So it's all up to you and you're a Girl Scout so you're always prepared <laughs> um, to do these kinds of things. So just to provide a quick recap of my 11 FGD tips. So first one, FGD is not an interview. So making sure that you always allow that group discussion happening. Second, know your questionnaires by heart. And apart from the questionnaires, also the expected answers that you would want to get from those questions. 
Third tip is always build rapport or relationships with your participants, especially at the very start. Okay, and number four is related, making sure that your participants are physically and mentally comfortable. Fifth is to always have some house rules in order to manage your group in order. And six, bro, 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 bro. Again, as a facilitator, this is one skill that you should definitely develop and always try to do. Seventh is for you to make sure that you give everyone equal chance to speak. Number eight is always making sure that the conversation is flowy and not a rigid question and answer portion. Uh, number nine is to always have two people who would run the FGD, one facilitator and one note taker. Number 10 is you have to always be neutral at all times. And as I've said, avoid, avoid, avoid leading questions. And last but not the least, do not forget to thank your participants and compliment them in the end. So yeah, so these are the 11 tips that I can give you advocacy champions on how to conduct a focus group discussion. I know some of this probably you're wondering like, oh, how does it work in reality? Or, oh, I don't understand. But practice makes perfect. As they say, experience is the best teacher. So what I'm going to suggest is just go for it. You know, don't worry to have a perfect FGD because there's not such a thing. You will always forget something. You will always miss something that you can just try to improve in your succeeding FGDs. So yeah. Um, but these tips I, I give you to everyone usually that I helps me with my data collection because this helps them as well and facilitate uh, for them to run a smooth uh, focus group discussion. And um, if you want a good example, you can ask Angelica <laughs> because she helped me run a focus group discussion when I did the internal evaluation um, for the GoPal Nutrition Program in GSP. So, yeah okay um so if you have any other questions or if you need more examples feel free to contact either angelica or marie or you can also contact me i mean angelica and marie has my contact details i'm also in facebook twitter instagram tiktok whatever social media so you can always follow me and ask me questions for any future tips. so for now Thank you everyone for being patient with this video and good luck in your focus group discussion. See you later. Bye.